Hello guys, welcome back to another video. So there is an alleged interim government plan in Nigeria. The DSS says that some people are planning to cause unrest in the country. And now you guys know that they're trying to be very conscious because of the uh, inauguration that is coming on. And this is a very big case because it's punishment by death as well. And I will also say that I don't know the obedient family will have to be very careful because this could be a plot to arrest Peter Obi so that everywhere can calm down because for some days now there have been massive protests here and there. But I'm just going to leave you guys to watch the video and hear by yourself. It's an embarrassment really because I believe that uh, the DSS uh the constitutional uh the agency that is in charge of gathering intelligence and then passing intelligence to other agencies that are supposed to take action you know and i don't think it serves the purpose of this country for the dss to come and make these pronouncements in the manner they are making it what would have made sense to us is that so so, -so person is involved so, so person has been arrested or is under interrogation or whatever action has been taken. Not to, okay, what do we do as the as the as politicians or as uh, citizens of the country? You know, we can't do nothing. Could it be politicians behind this? Well, that whoever, is nobody as nobody this is above the law. No, I'm saying, could it be politicians? Yes, who are they say key, 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 uh, key stake, uh, players, key players in the in the in the. So it's system. likely to be politicians. Politicians, but whoever the person is, if they and if they know that the person is doing something that is untowards to democracy that will scuttle what we are, you know, all this, this process, I think the, 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 the sensible thing to do or the lawful thing to do is to take back, take back the person into custody, ask him questions. They could come out and say that, well, so-and-so person has been found to be in this and we have asked questions, you know, he has been released or whatever it is. But to make these, you know, pronouncements to further create some kind of tension some kind of uh, you know crisis that as if we are not in control of the situation it does not really meet the requirement of so, what I believe you know. The, let, let's uh, assume some matter, uh, as you alluded on the top of your introduction. Uh, what the DSS is saying is essentially that some people are planning to wage a war against Nigeria. This uh, move is undemocratic. It is illegal. It is in unconstitutional. Section 1 of our constitution is very clear that no Nigeria cannot be ruled, neither any part of Nigeria can be ruled other than through constitutional means. And the only means recognized by the constitution is for people to win elections and to be duly inaugurated by the authorities stipulated by law. And therefore, uh, it is unconstitutional. It is also criminal. Because uh, what uh, these individuals are planning is potentially what is called treason under our criminal laws, and it is punishable by death. It carries the death penalty, which shows that it is one of the most heinous crimes uh, in Nigeria. Uh, now, of course, uh, the fact that this statement is coming from the DSS uh, gives me hope, but also gives me concern. The concern is that the fact that the statement is coming from the DSS means that this is a very, very serious matter. It is a damn serious matter because we know that the DSS has never been reckless with statements like this. They are always serious. They are professional in what they are doing. And now that they are coming out with this statement, it, is, it shows that they do have hard evidence that some individuals are unfortunately planning to do something untowards, uh, which will throw our country into chaos. Now, the positive side of the statement com coming from the DSS is that since it came from them, it shows that the DSS and other security agencies are on top of the matter. And we know that the DSS has always been very good in gathering information and sharing it with authorities. And therefore, what we will call on security and law enforcement agents is to take this intel very seriously and to take all steps within the bounds of the law to rattle this illegal, unconstitutional anti-Nigerian attempt. So, I mean... The DSS is talking about two methods, like you said. One is violent mass protest. Let's be clear that but, uh, protest, which is peaceful, 
sensible and orderly is constitutional and every Nigerian has a right to stage that kind of protest, including on inauguration day. But it has to be peaceful, it has to be sensible, it has to be orderly. However, where protest becomes violent, then it becomes completely illegal. And where the violence is intended to disrupt an inauguration, then it becomes treason that carries, like I said, the death penalty. Now, regarding courts, the law is very clear. The Electoral Act is very clear that no court can give an injunction to stop an inauguration. But unfortunately, shown we have seen uh, judges and courts in Nigeria using indiscriminately their power to issue expertise orders. Uh, one example recently was the order that was granted to the two uh, main polit uh, opposition parties to inspect, uh, inspect INEX materials. That is ordinarily legal. But because the court gave this uh, injunction expertise, that is, it had only one party for those of us who may not be lawyers, without hearing from INEC and other stakeholders, it ended up giving an order that stopped INEC from clearing the river so that governorship elections could take place. And what happened at the end of it? INEC had to go and apply before the court and explain to the court why the injunction it gave is going to stop our elections. Only then did the court vacate that order and allowed INEC to clear the beavers and uh, reconfigure it for the state elections. Now, even at that, INEC had to postpone the election by one week. That is one danger of expert application. Shown another example is the June 12th. During the June 12th, court orders, expert court orders contribute, contributed tremendously in uh, aborting the June 12th because there were two conflicting court orders. One court gave an order for the counting of the ballot, uh, ballots during June 12 to be stopped. That's in the 1992 elections. And another court, uh, court gave an order that the county should continue. And at the end of it, the election was annulled by the military administration. That's another case of expert injunction playing a role in rattling our country's democracy. And therefore, what I would urge judicial officers to do is to exercise their powers to order or uh, issue um, uh, expert orders judiciously and uh, sensibly. Let them have the interests of our country in mind as they issue expert orders. Anything that will stop inauguration or that will disrupt or destroy our democracy must be resisted. resisted.